Hi, my name is Nick Marchuk, and this is the first in a series of three videos where I will demonstrate how to design a printed circuit board for the PIC32 MX170F256B. I'm going to use EagleCAD, the free version, to design a two layer printed circuit board. And we'll be adding a, a whole variety of components to make the printed circuit board for our final project in the class ME433 Advanced Mechatronics at Northwestern University. So let's go through uh, what a printed circuit board looks like in Eagle and then talk about the specific board that we'll design for this class. So making a board in Eagle has three specific parts. Here's a board from two years ago. In the middle is the PIC microcontroller. We used a surface mount version of the PIC that year. And uh, the red colored lines is copper on the top of the printed circuit board, and the blue is copper on the bottom. The green is copper that's on both sides, and then the white is text that's written uh, with a printer. So we need to do a few things. We need to find all the components that we're going to use when we design this board. Then we need to draw a schematic, and then we can lay out the copper traces. In this video, I'm going to show the first part. We're going to find all of the components that we need to do the board design, and we're going to make a library of them. The library has the schematic view and the layout view, and it associates the, the pins on the schematic with the pins that get soldered. I'm gonna go through this as fast as I can because it's kind of a labor-intensive process. In the second video, I'll show making the schematic, which means uh, dropping in all the components and then connecting them with uh, green netlist wires so that um, the pins that need to be connected are associated with each other. And then in the third video, um, I'll go through the process of laying out the components, drawing the actual wires, and then generating the Gerber files, which are the files that we send to the manufacturer to have the board manufactured. So let's look at uh, the components that we need first. We're using the dip version of uh, this specific pick. Uh, so we're going to have to draw out all of the uh, pins onto a schematic. Then we need um, a bunch of components to get power and uh, do the specific project. So one thing we're going to do is we're going to use a surface mount micro USB connector. Um, this is the uh, PDF that shows the physical component itself. And then it shows the uh, uh, PCB layout. So this is the suggested layout that we will create. Um, it shows the pins that are the power and data pins and then some other pins that we'll put in uh, for soldering mechanical support. One thing this doesn't show is, I mean, it shows pin one and pin five, uh, but it doesn't say which is which. So here's a reference for pin one is the power pin and pin five is the ground pin. We're actually not using the data line, so we don't have to connect those to anything. So we'll get five volts in from the USB power supply, but at some point we'll also get six volts in from a pack of AA batteries. So we're going to use a slide switch to select whether uh, we're being powered from USB or from the battery, but not both at the same time because we don't want them to touch each other. Um, we're gonna have some push buttons for uh, for general purpose uh, uh, inputs to the pick, as well as a reset button. We're using a step up step step down voltage regulator from uh, Pololu to take our input voltage, either the five or the six volts, from that slide switch and turn it into three point three volts to power the pick and all of our circuits. We're going to use a uh, dual H bridge from Pololu to drive two small brushed DC gear motors. Uh, we'll use the CP2104 USB to UART converter from Adafruit to debug. We're going to use so many of the pins on the pick that we're actually going to get another chip, the MCP23017 from Microchip, which is an I.O. expander. So we're going to get more I.O. pins by talking to this chip. Then any of the chips that can burn out, so uh, the pick in particular, as well as the uh, I.O. expander, uh, instead of soldering them directly to the PCB, we're actually going to solder this adapter in and then plug the chips in. Um, and we'll be using female headers for all, all the other chips that could burn out. So uh, we'll keep that in mind when we're designing the PCB that we're actually not soldering the chips directly in, we're going to solder adapters in. Then we'll be using uh, 
a small TFT LCD screen. And the thing that's going to use all these pins is um, this uh, OV7670 camera with a FIFO chip. Um, so the project is have the pick read an image from this camera and then control the uh, voltage going to the two motors using the H-bridge to drive a small robot around. So let's take uh, another quick look back at Eagle. So in Eagle, usually the first thing you do is you start with a schematic and you add all the components and then make the connections. Uh, to add components, we go to the Add Part button. And the Add Part button will open up a dialog menu that shows um, the libraries that are pre-installed with Eagle. And you can go through those libraries and try to find parts. So for instance, if I wanted a resistor, um, I'll click and I'll press R and it will bring me down to a library called RCL. And this is a library that contains resistors, capacitors, and inductors. And so I could go into, say, the RUS area and look at all these resistors that I could choose from. They all have the same schematic, but they have different uh, pin layout, depending on uh, the size of the resistor and how I want it to uh, be ranged on my board. So things like resistors, capacitors, LEDs, those will all exist inside of some pre-made libraries in Eagle. But things like the PIC aren't pre-made, so we'll have to make the PIC. And then things like the LCD screen and the H-bridge, those don't ex exist either. So the first step before we get to this part where we can add uh, components to our schematic file is that we should assemble all of those parts that we need into a library. I'm going to close this project. So we start fresh. And uh, we're going to make a new project. And the first thing we'll do is make this library. So I'm going to just go into my generic projects file and right click and say new project. And this you probably want to put in your uh, Git folder if you're doing my class, Advanced Mechatronics. I'm going to call this ME433 uh, 2021. So the uh, project is just a folder that is going to contain all of the uh, files we're about to make. So I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to say make a new uh, library. And I'll save it. And I'm going to give it the name, the same name as my project. And I'm going to um, make this window not the whole size of my screen because some of the components that I want to use in my project are already in libraries. So I can copy them out of the library that they're in and put them into the, the library that I have now that will have all the components for uh, this project. So in the command window, a little smaller too, I can open up the libraries that are installed um, on this computer. And um, in the one called Eagle PCB, those are all the ones we just saw that are pre-installed. I can go and I can find uh, the things that I like. So for instance, I like the resistors and capacitors um, that are pre-made. So I'll go down to uh, RCL and uh, I'm gonna uh, look at this uh, RUS and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say copy to library. So my library that's currently open, when I say copy to library, copies it there. So now all of those components now exist in that library. And I'll also grab um, the capacitors. See. We have CX and CY and CUS. We're going to grab the US capacitors, the library, and the polarized capacitors as well. Now there are way more capacitors in here than we actually need. We only need like one specific one and one specific resistor and capacitor. That's fine. Um, what else can we grab from here? Don't need any inductors. Okay, so that's all we need from there. Um, notice there are other resistor libraries. So if you want to look around for other resistors, you can grab them from wherever you want. Okay, other things that we want. Um, some components that we'll add to our board aren't even going to be physical. For instance, we might want a tag that just labels ground and 3.3 volts and power in. So we can grab those components 
from a, another library, just add it to our library so that we don't need to find them later. Uh, here in supply one, so I'm going to grab a tag for 3.3 volts and a tag for 5 volts and a tag for ground. Um, and then when we add the, the battery, I'm going to grab one called uh, VCC, or is it actually we'll do V plus, that'll be the battery when we add the battery. Oh, yeah, what else do we need? Um, the pick and the uh, IL expander are both dip uh, chips that have 28 pins. We don't want to have to make a schematic, or we'll make the schematic for those chips, but we don't want to make the layout because that's a standard dip 28 pin chip. Um, so I'll go and I'll find um, not a component that has 28 pins, but just the layout and copy that in. Where is that going to be? For instance, we could check the microchip library. And these, uh, the first things that pop up in a library are uh, the schematic and the layout that have been linked together. If we keep scrolling down, we could instead just grab the footprint, which is the layout. And we're specifically looking for the uh, dip version of a chip that has 28 pins. Um, and if you look at this uh, dip 28-3, that's the standard um, size for dip chip. Uh, dash 6 is like a really wide one. I don't know if they make those anymore. So we're, we're going to copy this to our library. That'll just save us uh, the effort of looking up how far these pins are apart and how big the holes are and things like that. Now it's just the footprint. OK, what else do we want? Uh, we're going to have some LEDs. So we should find some 3 millimeter LEDs. LED library. Here's, LED, here's an LED part that's got a bunch of different sizes of LEDs. I'm going to just grab that whole LED library. OK, we have resistors, we have capacitors, we have LEDs. So we, we need to make a button. We need to make uh, all the other components. So I think we've just grabbed all of the things that pre-exist with an eagle. Uh, some other part that I actually like are uh, from the company SparkFun. Um, are just holes that are in a row as if it were a breadboard, because a lot of the chips that we'll be plugging in um, are really just um, holes in a row. So uh, SparkFun calls those connectors. I'm going to go and find this library that I saved. Open a library. Maybe I'll save mine first. Close it, and then go open the library that I put into uh, Eagle Libraries, sparkfun-connectors.lbr. I put this in our Git repo, so you don't have to download it from mine. Just grab it from the course repo. And so here we can see, uh, for instance, con01 is a single pin, and then a bunch of different ways of connecting to a single hole. Um, just a, a single hole and then a hole without silk screen and then a kind of a big hole and then one with a long pad and one with no silk screen. Um, so these are nice to use um, when you plan on having a wire into your printed circuit board that you just want to solder or you have a chip that has like seven pins in a row we'll be able to copy the footprint. So I'm going to um, copy a bunch of these uh, library parts uh, into my new library. Open up the library I'm working in. And then in the control panel, go into library, and we're looking in uh, connectors. And I think I'll just grab them all, because uh, I don't really know how many I won yet. So I'll copy connector one, and two, three, or maybe I'll do up to like 10. And then our um, uh, camera is an 11 by 2. They don't seem to have that here. So I'm going to copy the uh, 12 by 2 and then later, I guess, edit it to be an 11 by 2. OK. 
So if I go, um, I want to check out all of the components in this library so far. I've got my three volt and five volt tags. I've got uh, capacitors, connectors, resistors, LV ground. Now let's start um, making some parts from scratch. And we'll start with the pick. So the important thing here is that we um, get the pin numbers associated correctly. So pin one is MCLR and pin two is A0 and pin three is A1. Uh, I'm not going to type in the names of every single thing that every pin can do. I'm just going to say that pin two is A0. And then if we have questions later on, we come back to this data sheet to figure out, uh, you know, A0 is also AN0 and things like that. So how do we make um, a schematic from scratch? So I'm in my library. I'm going to um, go to the uh, symbol button. And I'm going to say, make a new symbol. This is the pick 32 and X. 170F256B. And we get to this grid, and if you look carefully, there's, uh, there's a dotted line uh, arrow in the middle. That's the origin. I'm going to try to keep all of my, uh, my part symmetric around the origin. It'll make it easier to move it around later. And I'm going to add pins. I'll go over and click the pin button. And wherever I drop this pin will later be a point where I can attach a wire to this chip. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna make this look exactly how it looks in the data sheet. Uh, you know, for instance, if you were going to make an op amp chip, you might try to draw a triangle and make it look like the schematic of an op amp rather than how the chip looks. But when the chip is so big, like the pick, I'll just, just draw it to make it look like, um, like the the pick does. The uh, the pick is. Uh, 14 pins on the left and 14 pins on the right. And I will space them every other uh, row. One, two, seven. So one pin, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So there's 14 pins on the left side of the chip. And if I wanted to draw the 14 pins on the right side of the chip, I could right click and that will cycle through uh, my options for which direction the pins are. So the, the wire is going to connect at that green circle. And I could draw 14 more pins. Or uh, I could save some time and I could try to copy them. So Eagle is a little bit old school. If I wanted to uh, get some information about this pin, I can't, for instance, I, I guess I could, I can't right click on it right now because right now I'm dropping a pin. So if I wanted information on this pin, I would go click the info button, and then I could click the thing I want info about, that pin. Um, if I wanted to move it, I'd click the move button, and then I, when I click it, I can move it around. But if I'm on the info button, I can't move it. Um, this is kind of like you click the tool before you click the object. If I want to operate on many objects, first I have to group them. So I'll grab the group tool, and I will select all of the components. And what I'd like to do is copy these. So I will go to the copy tool, and if I click on the copy tool, um, the way I can't, if I just click on one of the, even though I've grouped this object, if I click on one and copy it, it loses the group. So I don't want to do that. Uh, I want to group all of the components, and then uh, I'll click on copy, and then I will, I think it's control, right click. Now I've got all of the pins, all that whole group copied. And if I right click, I'm now in like a move setting, so I'm going to rotate them so they're facing the other way. And I'm going to move them. Okay, so I've drawn 28 pins for the pick. Now the goal is to uh, give them each the correct name. So I will go to the name tool. And I will click on the first one. And I'm going to give it the name 1.mclr. Because when we look at the data sheet, uh, pin one on the top left is MCLR. And then pin two is going to be 2.A0. And pin three is going to be 3.A1. And I'm just copying the names out of the data sheet and making sure I get the order correct. Now later, I'm going to associate this pin one with the footprint pin one. And it's going to be a lot easier when the pins um, uh, have a number in front because it will uh, organize the pins 
alphabetically. So if I start with a number, then they'll come out in the right order. And if I just call this MCLR and A0 and A1, they would come out alphabetically. And then when I associate a pin one on the footprint, I'd have to remember that MCLR was pin one. So it's just kind of easier to remember right now that the, the pin one is MCLR. Okay, so we'll quickly go through this. Um, pin four uh, is B0. It is also uh, PGD. That's our data line for um, the snap programmer. And pin five is B1. It's also PGC. I just want to remember that when, when I have to make the schematic later. Let's see, pin six is uh, B2. Pin seven is B3. Pin eight is a ground VSS. Pin nine is A2. Pin 10 is a three pin eleven is B four pin twelve eight four pin thirteen is a power B D D and pin fourteen B five. Then we wrap around the chip uh going counterclockwise to pin fifteen is B6, pin 16 is B7, pin 18 is B8, 19 is B9, 20 is a ground, 21 is B cap, Oh, I already see a missed line. 18 is B9. 19 is VSS. 20 is VCAP. 21, B10. Two B eleven twenty three B twelve twenty four B thirteen twenty five B fourteen twenty six B fifteen twenty seven middle ground 28 analog power. Okay, we've got all of our pins. Uh, and those are all box around the whole chip. So that I remember that these pins are also associated with each other. And then I'm going to grab the text tab and do caret name in all caps. And then another one for caret value and this will allow me to use the name and the value tool um, when I drop this component into my schematic to give this a name like uh, u1 you know this is chip one and the value is uh, pick 32 so I can uh, that will dynamically let me change the name if I use this keyword caret name and caret value okay so uh, we've got our schematic the next thing to do is find the footprint that we're going to associate with that. And we already copied it. It was called dill28 or something like that. So this is the footprint for a 28 pin dip chip. And I can just uh, double check things here. I'm going to click info and I click on this pin in the top left, pin one and pin 14 at the end, wrap around to pin 15 and pin 28. And it's nice that we can copy this out of the library because hopefully they did their job and this component uh, is the correct size. Um, something that would be interesting would be what's the drill size? So when they drill this hole, is that hole big enough for the wire that has to go in, either the leg of the chip or the adapter? Uh, 
I'm going to trust that they did that correctly. And then rather than making this a, a circle um, of copper around the hole, they've made an elongated uh, hole here. So that'll give us more area to solder onto. Uh, takes up more space on the board. It's a little easier to solder. Um, we'll, we'll leave that like this. And then the white is the silk screen. So that is going to be printed on the board to remind us what is the name and value of this chip. Um, I'm going to move these. It's kind of weird that they're under the chip because once you solder the chip on there, uh, it would cover it up. But when, when we're doing our board layout, we can actually move these around again. So I'm just going to keep them here for now on the library footprint. Um, but we'll probably move the name and the label, the value labels later on. Okay, so we have the schematic, we have the footprint. Now we have to associate them in a device. I'm going to make a new device. This is the PIC32 MX170F256B. And I'm going to um, add the PIC that I just made in the schematic form. And I'm going to find that fill footprint. And then I have to click connect to say, OK, which pin on the schematic connects to which pin on the footprint? And because I gave these uh, sequential names, um, pin 1 is going to pin 1. I would say connect. And pin 2 to the pin 2. I can just mash the connect button, get the connections all correct. OK, so now I have a pick, and I have um, footprint. I'm going to save this and show you how to do a sanity check. Uh, I won't do the sanity check for all of the components right now, um, but this is something you should do before moving too far. So I'll go back to the control window, and in my project, I'm going to make a new schematic. And I want to add the pick to the schematic. And the first trick is, did does it know that I made a library called ME433? I don't think it does. I'm going to open the library manager. And I'm going to go find the library that I made. Projects. Here's the library I just made. Let's open. Go find it here first. Okay, so now that I uh, added it here, it should now show up in the in use area of the libraries. Okay, great. So here's my library, and I'm going to add pick my schematic, and I'll save this schematic. Um, now I want to see what this chip looks like on my board, so I will go to this button that says Generate or Switch to Board. And here's what, um, every time we add a schematic uh, component to the schematic, over in the board, that component gets pushed off to the left. So this uh, black center area, that's the printed circuit board that we're designing. And then uh, every time we add a component, we can grab it. We can move it here. And like I said, um, we can now grab the name and the value and move them. And if I don't like that name or value, I can come grab, say, the value tool and change the value of my pick to, uh, sure. And maybe I'll change its name to uh, view one. And when I go back to the board view, we see that the the value is the same value. The name is now u one, and I could move those around. And this will just remind me when I'm soldering the the, the chips that um, this socket, which looks a lot like the socket for the I/O expander, this is the one that gets the PIC32, not the I/O expander. Okay, so the actual doing the layout and the schematic will save for two other videos. Let's go finish the library. 
Okay, we've got our pick. Um, let's do um, uh, a complicated one. Let's do the USB connector. So the first thing is to make the symbol. I'm going to call it uh, micro USB. And the micro USB has um, five pins, and pin one is power, and pin five is ground. We might as well label them all, even though we're not using them in this project. I'm going to go drop five pins. Five. And pin one is five volts. Usually we call it V bus. And pin two is data minus. Three is data plus. Four is E. Five is ground. I'll drop my box. And I'll give it a name. And I'll give it a value. So this is kind of the easy part, drawing the schematic. The more difficult part is going to be the footprint. We uh, didn't go and steal the footprint from another library, so now we have to make it from scratch. And we'll, we'll do that by following along with um, this uh, reference PCB layout. So I guess I'll start with um, pin 1 is a rectangular surface mount pad, and it is uh, 0.4 units are in it. Pretty sure this is probably millimeters. Oh, yeah, millimeters. Uh, 0.4 millimeters by 1.35 millimeters. So here's the pad. That's a through hole. Here's an SMD pad. And I can either try to find it, or I can just type. Well, I don't know what my units are. We'll go to the grid view. And our oh, word mills. Mills means thousands of an inch. We're going to change to the millimeter view temporarily. And we're uh, 0. 0.4 by 1.35. Was that it? 0. 0.4 by 1.35. And I'm just going to drop one, two, three, four, five of them. But the spacing is not correct. It's just snapped to that grid. So we'll go back to the PDF. And the spacing between them is 0.65 millimeters. So I've arranged them symmetrically around um, the x axis, zero. So this one should be position x should be point. Six five. This one will be twice that. Six point six. Two is that negative point six five. Those are uh, quite close to each other. So soldering this will be a little difficult. Um, but when we get to soldering, I'll show you some tricks on how to do that.
Okay, and then in line with those are some holes for the mechanical support of the back of this chip. And so they are uh, five millimeters apart, and it's a hole that is, um, we can only put round holes in, we can't really put these oval holes in. So I'm gonna choose the larger of the dimensions here, uh, 1.25. We're gonna put a 1.25 diameter hole uh, five millimeters apart. Hole, uh, that is 0.25 diameter. Round hole. Should be. So, as a sanity check, when I look at this, those are pretty close to each other. So, this is probably isn't the right size hole. The drill is 1.25, the diameter. What happens when I. Okay, so the diameter is how much bigger should the soldered part be? Gotta be bigger than the drill. But we have to have enough of it exposed so that we can solder to it. So we'll do that 1.6. We'll see what that happens. We do the design. Take a look at that one more time. Um, that hole's probably much bigger than it needs to be, but just based on this picture, I'd say this is the minimum that they probably want. Okay, and then the more complicated part, are where do these two holes go? They look like they're 1.5. Uh, millimeter diameter holes. And how far apart are they from the center of these? 2.7 millimeters. Now a 0.5 hole. And how far did I say? They should be 2.7 away. So this one's Y is 2.54. Oh, I just might call these Okay, and then the distance to the center. We don't show a very good dimension for that. It's something between 6.5 and 7.89. Uh, let's say it's 7. This would be five. And this would be five. And then I should number the pins that matter. So pin one is on the left. I'll grab the name tool. Plus. is ground. These other pins will also be available to us, but we don't have to connect it to the, anything. They're more mechanical. Okay, the last thing I want to do is I want to draw a box around this to know that other components shouldn't get too close. And we can also see that it's designed to hang over the edge of the PCB, and it should be, uh, that should be 1.45 uh, millimeters away. So I'm going to grab the line tool. And now when I draw this line, 
um, this layer is where it's going to go in. If I'm in layer 1, that's going to be drawn on copper. I'm going to go to T place layer 21. That's the silkscreen layer. How big this line is being drawn. i make it thicker so that we can see it a little bit easier. Draw it like that. And it should be, what was it, 1.45 or something? 1.45. that's where the edge of the PCB will be, um, but the actual USB connector sticks out a little bit more. And then I'll give a uh, text for a name, value. Now this kind of chip right, is they really need a name or a value on the printed circuit board because it's obvious it's a USB connector, but we'll keep that there anyway. Okay, so I've got the symbol, I've got the footprint, now we have to make a device, micro USB. I'm going to add the micro USB part. Footprint. And I have to click connect, and pin one V bus is going to be bus. Two, three, four, five is going to ground. The other pads that I made don't have uh, pins to connect them to. That's fine. They're just there for mechanical support. Okay, I think that's it. If we look closely at the data sheet, actually, it has two more pads. Um, I guess they, you could solder those too. I'm going to leave those off just because I'm feeling a little lazy. I'm going to hope that these uh, pins that go through the board, the through hole board pins, those are mechanically enough so that when we plug this in, it doesn't just rip off. Um, these little surface mount pads, they don't look like they're going to add too much stability to me. Okay, uh, as we're going through our design, we've got uh, the, the way the power plugs into the board. That's the USB connector. The next thing it's going to go through is the switch, the slide switch. So let's design the slide switch. So first we have to do the schematic for a slide switch. Call it slide. And here you can draw a slide switch however, however you would want to <laughs> indicate this is a slide switch. So I'm going to pin 1, pin 2, and pin 3. And I'm going to use the name tool. Say um, 1. I'm going to, uh, I don't know why, I'm going to make this one the VBUS side. So that's the power coming from the USB connector. I'm going to make pin 3 my battery side. And pin 2, I'm going to call V out. We're kind of using this backwards, but we have two possible power supplies. And when we flip the switch to the left, V out will be coming from 5 volts from the V bus. When we flip to the right, we'll get the battery voltage output. And I'll draw a little box. And give it a value. And we have to draw a footprint. Base it on the PDF. We have three holes that are 0.9 millimeters in diameter, and they are 2.5 millimeters away. Hole. Reason. Oops, I don't want to do my millimeter nine okay, they were two point five away. Names. Now I'm going to draw a box around this to remember how physically big it is. So, see how they indicate that. It's 
four millimeters wide and we'll say 12 millimeters long. Okay, so that should be four by 12. Give it a name. And we give it a value. Device. Matic. Footprint connect them three. Okay, so you're probably getting hang of this at this point. <laughs> uh, what's next? We've got power coming into the USB port, and that goes to the switch. Now we need that to go to the 3.3 .3 volt regulator. So let's see how we design the regulator. I call this uh oh. Three. This has uh, four pins. Let's see. We'll do it in this orientation. So we'll go V out, ground, V in, shut down. V out, V in, shut down. Double check. V out ground, V and shut down. Okay, so now um, we're going to make a, a new footprint for this regulator. Um, it's it, it's designed to fit into a breadboard. So rather than trying to figure out what size holes we should use here, I'm going to go find um, a component from SparkFun, the three-pin connector. They call one by o three. Actually, it's sorry, it's four pins. We only use three of them. And I'm going to uh, copy all of these and put them into my other one because I already know that these pins are 0.1 inch spacing and the right size hole for the header pins um, that this regulator uses. I'm going to select them all, grab copy tool. I'm going to control right click to copy everything. I'm going to go back to my Part. And I'll paste. Um, and Sparkfun uses uh, kind of a weird size for their name and value. We'll keep that here and we'll change that later when we're actually doing the board design. Um, maybe we should rotate everything. So I'm going to grab it, move, I'm going to that one is up. And what I'm looking at is the real chip, one pin. 
one is up like that. I actually got a pair of calipers. I'm looking at the physical chip itself. It the board is 0.65 inches by 0.45 inches. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just delete the silk screen that they currently have and draw my own box. As well, we can do the name and value too. The box is something like this. How units are we in now? Still in mills, thousands of inches. Okay, so what did I say? This should be 0 0.65, 650. Uh, so from 200 to 450. Okay, so um, Somehow we should indicate when we're soldering this to ourselves, uh, where's pin one on this, just in case we somehow want to put it backwards. So um, I'm just actually going to name these pads the way they're named on the board. Uh, so too small doesn't print very well. I hold the um, Alt key, uh, I snap to a finer grid. So the, the silk screen, the, the white layer that prints on the printed circuit board is essentially free. So use it up as much as you can. Give yourself lots of hints so that you don't solder things incorrectly. Okay, and the last thing is to make the device. Okay, we're getting there. <laughs> um, we uh, also have a push button, two pins, um, one millimeter in diameter, five millimeters apart. Push button's pretty symmetric, so we don't really have to get fancy with the names. So, uh, kind of little which like thing here to remind myself that this is. My push button. <laughs> Sizes are really wonky here. Hole. 
five millimeters away. Too big. Nope, oh, five millimeters. Okay, and then physically, how big is this thing? It's point. It's a six millimeter by six millimeter. I'll just draw a box around it to remind myself how physically big it is. Okay, we've got our push button. Okay, at this point you could probably do the rest by yourself. Um, the H-bridge uh, is going to look a lot like um, this uh, regulator, except that we've got holes on both sides. Make sure you get the spacing between them correct. Um, the USB to UART connector got uh, just the end to worry about. We don't have to do the rest of the pins. The uh, IO expander, make it look just like this uh, with 28 pins like the pick. We're not gonna worry about the plug. That's what gets soldered in. Um, we wanna do something for the LCD screen. I'll measure it for you. This blue PCB is one inch in the narrow part and one and a half inches in the wide part. And the camera, the camera we're not going to plug directly into the board, we're gonna use a cable. So you don't necessarily have to leave a footprint as big as this board, just the holes around here. Okay, so I will post uh, an image of, uh, actually I'm not gonna post anything here. The next video is going to be about making the schematic. Uh, take a look at that video and the image that I generate from that to see if your library looks like my library. And remember that as you're uh, designing your board, you can always go back and edit the library. So if you find that you got the pin spacing wrong or you don't like how the labels look, everything is changeable until the very end. Okay, I'll see you in the next video on making the schematic.